Ross Greenwood held a special budget panel in Canberra earlier today with AI Group Chief Executive Innes Willocks, Aki Chief Andrew McKellar and Bram Black, the head of the Business Council. We think that it's so important to focus on a key thing in this budget, and that's how we improve Australia's competitiveness. I've spoken about that a number of times over the course of the last few months, but what we're pleased with, with what we've seen so far in this budget, is that there are some initiatives that will make a difference for business. We look at the changes with respect to FERB, we look at the changes with respect to uh, the removal of nuisance tariffs, the future made in Australia. There are some points that I'd like to come back to in that regard, but we've called for an Australian response to the IRA, and that is significant. However, what we need to see and what we hope that we can see moving forward is that these important steps that have been taken in this budget are used as a basis for moving forward with further changes that really drive competitiveness. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of tax reform, uh, industrial relations reform, changes to our regulatory settings, and of course, uh, federal support for states to go about changing their planning systems as well. So, Innes, do you get a sense that this government has a thirst for reform, the type of reform that Bran is talking about, that can move productivity forward in this country into the future? Well, that'll be one of the first things we look at, Ross, in the budget, is to see how many times the Treasurer mentions the word productivity in his speech. And we hope that he mentions it regularly because it's, that's going to be the important driver to make our economy more competitive. Yeah, we're facing a tightening labour market at the moment. We're facing really sticky inflation. We've got business conditions are toughening. Uh, R&D spend is at the lowest in a very <coughs> long time. Productivity is going backwards. So this, in many ways, is a fork in the road budget. You know, and we would hope that the government is able to grasp some of the opportunities here. Now, we've heard a lot from the Treasurer about so-called new economic orthodoxy after almost 30 years of growth. We need to really see what that looks like. And the other point here is there are some, you know, some would say heroic, others would say questionable, some would say doubtful assumptions that have come out around inflation at the moment. Mm. We need to see what the government is going to put in place in terms of measures to suppress inflation. And just very quickly, if there's one piece of low-hanging fruit that the government could undertake in the budget that could improve our productivity, what do you imagine that would be? Well... We have to get the fundamentals right, and the budget is just part of that. And I don't think we're going to see anything structural in terms of this budget around productivity. We're not going to see anything related to workplace relations reform or, uh, you know, you know there'll, be, there'll be some infrastructure and the like. Where we think the government will make some significant improvements around productivity, which are really welcome, is going to be in the education, training and skills mm -hmm. area, where the government has put quite rightfully a really significant focus coming out of the university accord, a big focus on apprenticeships and training uh, and learning for the future. We think that has a lot of potential. That's longer term, and that'll give us that longer term boost. Shorter term, that's where we're looking to see that we don't have any anti-productivity measures yeah, in the budget. Indeed. So, Andrew, your members, of course, right now, many of them manufacturers, many of them small and medium-sized businesses, they are suffering from a lack of competitiveness right now. Um, in fact, the, the number of uh, companies going broke right now is rising mm. in many of your key member areas. So what can the government do to improve their lot while they're handing out energy rebates to, to families and while they're handing out childcare subsidies or childcare wage increases? What is it that your members could potentially have in their favour? Well, Ross, uh, the, the thing I would say is that the first principle of the budget should be do no harm. So the thing that will uh, best uh, facilitate lower interest rates, take the pressure off interest rates, uh, that is to do nothing that will increase inflationary pressure in the economy. So I think that is going to be a major focus. Uh, we've heard about the, the measures that uh, have been spoken about in advance of the budget uh, in terms of um, uh, relief uh, on cost of living pressures. I mean, they're one thing. Um, they might detract from the headline CPI, but they don't really have an impact on core inflation, and that's what the Reserve Bank will be looking at. But that's just a punt, isn't it, that they throw the inflation problem out beyond the next election. That's what people are saying. Now, the government's rejecting that at the moment, but that's the reality of what they're doing. Well, and that's going to be the test. I mean, that is going to be the ultimate test. Uh, the, the Reserve Bank will be the judge on that in the coming months, uh, but... You know, if we want to really um, address some of those pressures that you're talking about, the best way to do that 
is uh, to enable interest rates to be reduced sooner rather than later. OK, so there's the uh, potential of, uh, for another year, having the instant asset write-off of up to $20,000. But I make the observation that if you're not making any money, you don't need a tax deduction. Well, uh, that's true. And uh, to be able to claim it, it's got to be passed into legislation uh, first. So, look, I think... Um, by all means, uh, th those are some useful uh, things that can be done. Uh, let's get the legislation passed. Uh, we think it could be broadened. Uh, we think it could be expanded to pick up a broader range of businesses. Business investment has been very weak now for some time. That's part of the productivity uh, equation that we are talking about. So, look, I think those things would be useful, but let's get those fundamentals right. OK, so, Brand, go back to an investment allowance. That's the other big one that could potentially be in the budget in key areas. So, in renewable energy, in some areas of that, certainly in some parts of the mining industry, potentially for nickel and also potentially for lithium miners and producers as well. Is this a sort of initiative that is welcomed by industry to try and provide the incentive to invest in the right areas for our economy? It absolutely is. It's important, I think, for us to remember that these are areas in which we do have natural advantages. So we do have a natural advantage in terms of critical minerals. Uh, we do have a natural advantage in terms of renewable energy. So we should be looking to support those natural advantages wherever we can. What we would always suggest, though, is that it's useful if we can extend these types of allowances or depreciation arrangements so that they are more broadly applied across the Australian economy. You know, at the end of the day, you want all boats to rise. You don't just want the boats to rise in a particular harbour. So for us, we always advocate for those broader measures, be it in terms of tax changes, allowances, if you will, uh, industrial relations, uh, regulatory reform and so forth. That's what we collectively believe is so useful for us to be thinking about in terms of a broader base reform agenda. But I do stress that Small steps, important steps such as this, are useful. So we're pleased with them. So, in it's the issue here about the future made in Australia policy is, yes, there are some key industries that have been chosen by government, but there are a lot of other essential industries that are simply being left behind that might say, well, we're struggling to compete. Our energy bills have gone up. Our wages bills are going up. Yep. We're now starting to, to struggle a little bit to maintain our workforce. What's being done for us? So, indeed, so this is going to be really interesting to see what happens in the budget around future made in Australia. That wouldn't be surprising at all if that was a catch cry for the budget. But what we sort of were really interested in, Ross, is whether the future made in Australia policy is actually a policy that can work. It doesn't just pick winners in quite specific industries, but it provides broader mm. support for industry. Or if it's just a bucket that everything gets thrown into, you know, in terms of industry support measures and broader economic measures. So this budget's got to be about prosperity, it's got to be about productivity, it's got to be about, be about resilience. Now, where Future Made in Australia fits in is going to be really crucial to the economic outcomes over the next few years. Yes, the government needed a response to the Inflation Reduction Act. But there's still a lot of questions out there around, is this the right way? But, but, it, but a government's a government, right? Yeah. And a government wants to be re-elected. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens after the election may be a totally different sort of answer. But right now, the government's priority is having policies that will also see it re-elected. Well, totally. And we are a year out from the election, whether we, you know, we like it one way or, or not. And this will be perhaps the last full budget before the next election. There may be a mini economic statement before the next election. So this is really setting the scene. That's why I said earlier this is a fork in the road budget because it has the potential to set us up for the next five years. With Future Made in Australia, this, yeah, it can have some significant success points, but there's already there's concern already among industry about crowding out, about the government picking winners, picking perhaps the wrong subject areas. We put almost a billion dollars into quantum. quantum. The UK has put one fiftieth of that into the same mm. company. So have we overreached and overpitched? That's what this budget is going to do. It's going to be fascinating. And the other thing also is about structural spending because the one thing is that eventually these surpluses the government's enjoying right now, which give it economic credibility to be sure, they expire. And the problem is then with those deficits mounting, the spending mounting, the structural spending mounting, whether that also has an impact on the business community, that it's seen to be, if you like, the answer for some of the taxation problems that the government might face in the future. Well, that, that's absolutely right. And... Uh... We would say that the government uh, doesn't have a revenue problem, it has a spending problem. So uh, one of the things we'll be looking at tonight is what, what is that medium-term tra trajectory that the government is uh, putting forward? Um, are they you know, um, 
putting us on a pathway where we are closing that structural gap that we know that is uh, is out there. Um, are we able to reduce uh, net debt as a, as a proportion of GDP over the medium term? So, you know, that's the kind of story that we will want to see, that the, bud, that the government has a credible medium-term fiscal strategy, that it's undertaking the repair that it needs to, that it's addressing those double-digit areas of uh, spending growth. So, at the moment, that's public debt interest. Uh, obviously, that's fuelled by higher interest rates. Uh, it's the NDIS. Um, that needs to be got back on track. Uh, it's areas like health spending, aged care spending, uh, defence. Uh, these are the big areas uh, where there is growth in expenditure. We have to have a credible story about how we're going to keep some of those areas under control in the future. I'll tell you about Andrew McKellar, Ennis Willocks and Brand Black. Many thanks for your time today. We'll find out very shortly exactly what is in that budget.